All right, taking a look here at uh, Cole's swing. And again, we, we, we talked about, uh, you know, the swing that night and that uh, there's a uh, heavy concentration on trying to kind of power the swing by, um, you know, turning his back leg or turning his back foot, you know, the squish the bug or, or whatever. In other words, trying to, to create hip rotation by how hard can I turn my back, my back leg. Um, you know, right, right off the bat, we, we talked about how that kind of works its way up and, uh, causes the upper half to begin to, to fly open and open up, uh, too soon. You can see at this point, you comparing, you know, this is Manny Ramirez. This is, uh, Drew Macias, uh, who's a big leaguer with the, uh, Padres. Um, his chest is already out on the ball. Okay, and our big leaguers' are chest is still square here to the pitcher. So, so the the spinning of the back leg causes the upper half to prematurely open up uh, as well. You know, we've we've got these uh, you know synced up pretty close to contact as well. So you can see he he's obviously you know flying open way too soon. Another thing uh, that that's always evident. Um, in these types of swings is this body position like this whereas we want um, a nice clean line like this where the body um, is leveraged behind the front side but the the overactive turning of the back leg uh, will almost always force this type of jackknifed uh, position again these are two different swings Cole had um, but we winded up in the same position on every one of them, uh, where the, the upper half has, has rotated prematurely and we're out there like that. When breaking down a swing, um, I look primarily at, at three areas, uh, what the back leg is doing, what the back arm is doing and what the front side is doing. And again, we, we look at this from uh, the perspective that, that the hitter is throwing the bat head. So we want that back leg to move as if we're throwing, the back arm to move, move as if we're throwing. Okay, The front side, um, we really want to make sure that that uh, remains very square as that front heel drops. And that we always make sure that the foot is in front of the knee and the shoulder stabilizes behind the knee so we always want to keep this relationship of you know knee behind the front foot and shoulder behind the knee which again is going to give us this nice clean position here okay and when that uh, front heel drops we want that front side still very square foot is square hips are still square the pitcher chest is still square front shoulder still locked on the pitcher you can see Cole is, has really flown open uh, you know prematurely here okay and looking at the back leg the back leg has really just two functions it's got a load okay which happens when you lift that front foot all the weight is now on the back leg okay very simple and then it's got to unload by just pressing or driving sideways uh, into that front side so it's a very simple load and unload simple one two action that we want out of the back leg that loading action happens before the pitch is released okay and then this pressing action or this shift occurs when the ball's about halfway or a little past halfway home now Cole is loading that back leg you know when the foot lifts he's loading and even though he's trying to fight it you know, he's trying to, you know, he's been taught to not, not shift. He's been taught to just spin the leg to rotate his body. Um, but he does create, there, there is some lateral pressing going on into that front side. If, you know, if you can see it there, there, there is a shift that has occurred. The, the difference is once his heel drops, you know, he really forces and over uh, emphasizes a turning or spinning back leg, really, really forcing it to spin over and really trying to spin through the ball. Now, his foot does become unweighted there, and it has to. In order for you to spin that foot like that, you can't spin it unless it becomes unweighted. So he, he does he does unweight it, 
but you know, right at right at contact, you know, he's still got weight back on it. If you look at our professionals, you can see they're off of that backside. The back foot is unweighted before and through contact with the baseball, and then the foot comes back down. But even Cole isn't really doesn't have much weight, if any, on that backside through there, and he does get unweighted. So that that's important to know that we're off of the backside. We're not sitting on our back foot as we hit the ball. So Cole, it's important for you to know that that back leg only does two things. You're gonna when you lift your foot, you're gonna load it, and it's gonna unload by just pressing sideways. You know, so it's you know load, attack. You know, or or there's a there should be a back or a, a negative feeling to it. You, know, you can say back. So you kind of go feel yourself go back, and then press sideways to attack. Okay, you can see your leg is already pressing sideways there, just like our pros. But you really overdo uh, trying to turn it and spin it, which is causing everything to fly open. Okay, so we're going to work on just you know loading and pressing sideways without forcing the foot over. Now. Again, after that, after you've you know shifted into the front side and gotten to the front side, the front leg is really what opens the hip. It's driving against the ground, and it's going to open the hip from the front. Now, after that happens, you know, as the hip begins to open from the front, the back side is of course, you know, pulled around, and uh, you know it's it's pulled around in this direction here. And as that happens, it's going to begin to pull, uh, you know, the, the back foot around. So we want to let it happen. We don't want to force it to happen. Okay? So with the back leg, we're just going to load and press sideways and then just allow it to come through. We're not going to force it anymore. Okay? And that's going to help us, uh, you know, with that front side that's giving us this, this bad position here. Okay. Moving up to the back arm. Okay. What we want to see out of the back arm, again, is a pretty simple move of the elbow lifting and slotting to the ball, okay? So the elbow works up and to the ball, okay? Again, we stay with that one-two cadence, you know, load, attack, or one-two, okay? And then the, the finish of our swing is just simply three, so it's a simple one-two-three, or load attack finish. But when when looking at the at the back arm during one and two, we really want to see that elbow load up. It loads up by lifting and turning in and then it slots to the ball. Okay? After those two things have happened, what we want to see with the back arm and back hand is really very little change. We want to feel like the top hand is still in front of the shoulder with the palm facing the pitcher. So we want to be able to load and slot that elbow with that hand staying in virtually the same place and position. Okay? Meaning we've got, you know, basically the, el the uh, elbow underneath the barrel, uh, palm is on out on the pitcher. Okay? We look here at Cole. We don't see a whole lot of loading. Maybe, maybe, a, maybe a little bit of lifting there. Then his elbow goes to the ball just like, you know, everybody's will. But you can see how, you know, the bat is dragging way back here behind him. That, again, makes the barrel very, very heavy. The bat is simply much heavier, you know, in this position as opposed to this position. So you got much stronger players swinging a bat that's much lighter in this position. The more the barrel's over the pivot point, over the hands, the lighter it's going to become. The more you flatten out and get the pivot point away, or they get the barrel away from the pivot point, uh, it's going to be become much heavier, much, much heavier. So, you know, the elbow slots in and gets way out in front. He's kind of dragging the bat back here behind his back. So he's got a heavier bat and a much longer swing. Okay.